What's up, Shameless Squad? This is like my pride song. We got rain on <laughs> me. It's cool. Okay, what are we talking about today? We are going to talk about what it's like being a single therapist business owner. So doing it all on your own as a solopreneur, everything like that. And we're just going to talk about some conversations, you know, questions that are really important for us to discuss. If you're new here, hit subscribe below, like this video, and comment something supportive below. But how do you think it's been being a single, you know, business owner? How has it given you resilience? Like, where do you start with that right off the bat? Um, I'm not going to lie. It's hard. It's really hard. You are everything. You are literally everything. You're the boss. Sometimes you hate yourself. You hate your boss. Mm. And you're the boss. Sometimes you hate your secretary. You're the secretary. Sometimes you hate your boar. You're the boar. You hate your marketing person. That's all you. Uh, and yet, at the same time, you know you can do all of this. So you become this well-rounded person. One of the things, I suck at IT. I've had to look up how to do IT stuff on my, my computer or how to set up things that I never thought I had to. And so there's a lot of things that you have to learn and be accountable for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's so true. It's all on you. If you were at the point where like you are unable to afford help or yeah. outsource some of that stuff which again if you are growing and growing you can do that more power to you yeah. everything like that but I think that's a really great point like it is all on you and I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned about myself yeah. is it's all on me and I think a lot of people don't understand how much I do as a businesswoman yeah. just by myself and you know, we talked about personal growth in a different episode. And one thing I forgot to say was like, with this, how business has given me resilience and how I've grown yeah. is I've grown a lot through rejection. <laughs> like, I put myself out there to get rejected yeah. on LinkedIn, to connect with people, to, you know, have therapists say, yeah, I'll totally network with you. And then they don't show up. They go, yeah. they're flaky. We are flaky. You know who you are. We are very flaky. <laughs> we are very flaky. But, and just even like Kaya one time said to me, like, I don't know if she was networking one night or I was networking one night, yeah. but we were talking about like, oh my gosh, you don't want to go. Yeah. And it was late. And I think you said it or I said it like, oh, I'm going to take one for the team or you're going to take one for the team. And that's the thing that can be really hard. And disclaimer, yeah. like we are not complaining about this at yeah. all. We chose this. We know this. So please don't think that we are coming off as victims to yeah. our circumstance. We just want to share this to be vulnerable. But I was just like, Paia, like, fuck, I wish I didn't always have to be the person taking one for the team. Yeah. Because I'm the therapist, I'm the coach, I'm the consultant, I'm the vlogger, I'm the blogger, I'm the accountant, I'm the admin, I'm the fucking the bookkeeper, yeah. I'm the face. Like, it's so many different things when starting out that people don't tell you just how much you actually are doing. Yeah. And I think that's why there's also so much growth in it as well. Yeah. And so one of the biggest things that I think about that too, it's like, God damn, like I see other people in corporate or nine to five or whatever. I'm like, that is the easy route for other people. Like, you know, my business is my baby. Mm -hmm. And when I literally see people with actual babies, babies yeah. getting help, receiving all the things, whatever. And people don't ask me about my business yeah. or what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know I was going to Bali. I'm like, damn, okay. Yeah. I get to work in silence then because not everybody is meant to actually know the things that I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, you talked about resilience. I mean, you have to believe in yourself. Nobody else has to believe in you, but you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself so much through the whole process. Because if you don't believe in yourself, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And so if you've given up on yourself, you need to ask yourself why you're giving it up on yourself. And that's something that you are going to really have to learn is to be your biggest cheerleader. You're going to have to bet on yourself. You're going to have to think you are the shit. You are the shit. Like, you believe I am the shit. Other people don't think that you're the shit, but you're going to say, I am the shit, bitch. 
Like, <laughs> like you really have to think that. Yeah. And some people are not going to take that well. And you have to say, you know what? I am the shit. I believe I am the shit. I'm going to make it. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But I will make it. And it's not about proving other people wrong. It's about saying, I can do this. I can do anything. So there's a lot of resilience. There's a lot of mindset. Believe in yourself when you take on this journey. Yeah. It's not about proving other people wrong. It's about proving yourself right. Yeah, I think is the biggest part. And, yeah. you know, I think you really learn about a lot when it comes to other people that you thought would believe in you in yeah. business. Yeah. And for some reason, I don't know if you have the same experience, but for me personally, like when I wanted to open up my own business or make moves and change, like I got so much shame from the people that were the closest to me. Do you think that's a good idea right now in a pandemic? Do you think that that's the wisest move? Like, are you sure about that? Is that safe? And all of that is like their fear and projection onto me. And I'm like, you. it's not healthy if I stay where I'm at now. It's not a good situation for nobody. And so did you get any like shame messages or or things that you experience here, like, damn, I thought you would have been one of my supporters here, but that's not the fucking case. Unfortunately, that happens a lot, and it's the people closest to you, too, the ones that you thought had your back, Yeah, and they're the ones giving you the most, these comments saying, why can't you just be normal? When they mean normal, why can't you just have a job that pays you predictably? And I get that security is good, but that security keeps us stagnant, keeps us stuck, keeps us unhappy. And some people are too afraid to step out and would rather be miserable and be kept in fear than actually go out and do something that is huge. Mm -hmm. And... And a lot of people said, what do you think you're doing? Why aren't you taking insurance? Like, you can have money all the time. And I'm like, yeah, that's the easy way out. And people look at, you know, us, we are like, why are you taking the hard way out? And some days I will ask myself, why am I working so goddamn hard? Why am I taking the hard way? And that's a great question. It's like, I'm doing this because I know the rewards could be bigger than being stable secure where it's very linear i know what i'm doing right now is here but i know that it's going to be very up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, who are some of those people for you if you don't mind me asking that like said some of that shit yeah you know you know it was my own mom um uh, my mom said that to me it's like why can't you just have a nine to five where you can get social security <laughs> you know and um i'm trying to think other people other close friends you know they're like wow great of you to start your own business but then your private pay oh well you're not going to be able to help everybody and you know coming from our field and being a BIPOC person, marginalized people, they're like, well, you, because you're a BIPOC, you should be helping everybody. And you should be accessible for everybody. And not everybody wants help. Not everybody wants help. And I learned that the hard way. Not everybody wants help. And they're projecting a lot of those scarcities onto us. And I've had to work through my own scarcities, like really work through my sca scarcities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Being vulnerable, like, and my mom also said those things of like the is yeah. that such a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, I think that's a big piece of maybe shameless feedback for anyone out there that you have a family member, a friend, a loved one, a colleague that just wants to start their own fucking business. Be a goddamn supporter, like. Yeah. If you support people, you know, we'll get into this in other episodes, but like getting married, having babies, buying houses, having the dog, buying the brand new car, going on trips, and you can't support somebody literally following their dreams and doing what's best for them. What does that say about you? It says you have work to do. So this is a shameless call out in truth. Like,
like, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of fear and projection, and that's not for that person to hold. They have enough stress going on, and that person needs more support than anything else at this time. So, I love what you said about, like, you cannot help everyone. And, you know, when you were saying that, like, yeah, BIPOC therapists should be accessible to, you know, everyone, or you need to be there for everyone. I was like, oh my gosh, like, just think of how much of a recipe for burnout that could also yeah. be and then not showing up like as your best self right. um let's talk like boundaries yeah when it comes to you know being a business owner and really like what it's like as a therapist you know yeah. someone naturally who's in the helping field and stuff like that yeah but then how does that show up in your personal life outside of your business and professional life yeah i've had to really draw my boundaries on who i i go out with because when people find out that you're a therapist they have to say oh my god okay can i tell you something can I tell you? <laughs> oh my god you could be like a you could be like a resident therapist and it's like i'm not doing this no I'm not doing this. They they think that we can give advice to them yeah. free and they can just, you know, tell us their problems, trauma dump on us too. That's a big one. Yeah. That's and be like, one. okay, you know, so what do you think I should do? And then it's like, so I had to really learn my boundaries and before I would be okay. You know, are you asking me for my feedback? Like, yeah, I would give it to them and they would do the total opposite. And it would be frustrating it would be as hell. Frustrating, it? Yep. And then they will come and talk to me again about the same issues. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. So I had to really draw my boundaries about who I who I hung out with. Yeah. Who I hung out with, who took my energy, who wanted to use me for my knowledge. Yeah. And who actually wanted to see me for me. Yep, absolutely. That's so true. And it's such a big thing. Like, and I think as therapists, we genuinely just want to help. If people are like, yes, give me that yeah. feedback. And the hard part is, like, we get trained at, in, like, our field of, like, don't get attached to your clients' outcomes and don't work harder than them. Yeah. But then when a personal, like, friend or family member, colleague, loved one is asking you that, yeah. it's almost like a knife in the back. Right. It's like, you don't respect me. You don't respect my energy. You don't respect yeah. my feedback. But you're going to ask me. Yeah. And I'm going to give you this truth here. Yeah. But you're not going to do anything with, about it. And it goes back to that you can't help everyone point. And so it's like, yeah, having to let go of that for fucking sure. I think that's been one of the biggest boundaries that I've had to have because people want to use you, like you yeah. said, for your education. And because of what I do is so niche, Yeah, I get texts from colleagues, family members, friends, loved ones, whomever, that are like, can I ask you about this? And I'm like, that's an email consultation that's $207. Thank you. Yeah. Or if you want us to meet face to face and you really want me to give you this energy of all the things and me show up for you, give you the resources, tell you what the fuck to do, give you the answer. And if you aren't going to pay me for that, then I know you're not going to take me seriously. Right. I'm going to share that with you. So I've learned that as well. And I've also learned that with colleagues in the field. Yeah. A lot of colleagues, when they saw me open up my private practice, they were like, oh my gosh, it's so great. I got texts from people saying, I would love to pick your brain, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, that's a paid consultation. I don't just do pick your brain lunches. So if you want to know what I did, you can pay me for this. And then they try to gaslight you. And these are yeah. therapists and say, oh, you misunderstood me. No, I fucking no, did it. No, I did not. No, I fucking did it. You're just cheap. And you don't actually respect me enough to pay me for that. And so I think it's huge when it comes to like money boundaries, yeah. time boundaries, people boundaries, and who you can and can't be around. And, you know, I'm an early, like, I'm not a night owl. I'm an early birdie. Like, I'm 32 going on 92. Like, I have a bedtime. <laughs> and Heidi has heard this about me, too, of, like, Jackie's really mindful of her time and her schedule, and she has really firm boundaries on that. And, like, yeah, because... Yeah. 
I'm at this point in life where I don't want to be out late at night or go out to dinners if I'm not even seeing clients. Yeah. And it's a point where I'm just mentally, emotionally tired at the end of the yeah. day. Where like, no family friends, I don't want to talk to you or see you or help you solve this problem or no. whatever. And this is like a crisis or an emergency, but that's a big one that I've learned when I'm with clients where I have a big work day. Mm-hmm. Like, no. Yeah. The, those are my nights to really recharge. And people say, like, well, you're still going. Like, you're an extra. And I've really, over the years, I've learned I'm more in the middle. Because as a kid, I was really shy. Really, yeah. And I was an introvert. And I did not like talking to yeah. people, whatever. And then growing up later in my business, it was good that I was an extrovert. So I could, like, push myself out there and say whatever. But then with what we do, I've definitely been in the middle now with it. Yeah. So I think there's a lot that's changed with me, personally, professionally. And my boundaries have changed too over time. So yeah, we have to protect ourselves. Yes, we really have to protect ourselves because other people want to take advantage of us, and companies and organizations want to take advantage of us. So we have to really protect ourselves because nobody else is going to protect us. Yeah, and that's huge. Like needing to set and stick to boundaries because if you don't, nobody else will. Yeah. You're the person. Like, again, you're the boundary holder, too, when you're the boss and you're the CEO. And one of the things that I said to Payo once, I was like, we have to treat our schedule like we're fucking celebrities because people want to spring things on you last minute. And it's just like, oh, my God, overwhelmed. And it's just like, no, this is not. Their urgency is not my emergency. Like, fuck that. Yeah. Um, Their crisis is not our crisis. Yeah. How do you think it's been? Because this comes up a lot with therapists for some fucking reason. People like to question us and how we do our job. How has that shown up, you know, for you as a business owner, a therapist, like just in this profession overall? Because I've really noticed that over the years. Have you experienced that? I notice that people love to tell us how to do our jobs who are not in the field. Would you ever tell a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer how to do their job? Probably not. Yet somehow our field, people love to tell us how to do our job, what we should be doing, and they think they know our job more than we do. Why do you think that is, though? You know, I wonder if it's because we're a profession that is helping, and we are a profession that is mainly held by women. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because there's lots of other of those fields that are male dominated. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And one of the things that I noticed that when you know people wanted to tell me how to do my jobs, so that was a lot more in agency settings, and clients would question me on that. But when people would pay me out of pocket, they don't question. They don't. So there's a difference there too with the type of therapist and the type of care you might be getting. Or the type of clients you may be seeing. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I called out, you know, at my old job, um, a PA, med okay. provider for those who okay. don't know what that is, physician's assistant. assistant. And, you know, this person, they were looking at, like, oh, I want to go to this cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. Medication therapy, like, conference. And I was like, oh, why do you want to go to that? I'm just curious. And she was like, oh, because I want to start using this with clients. And I'm like, okay, I need to be honest with you. You are the med provider. You are not the therapist. Right. And so I just shamelessly shared, like, I get told to stay in my lane as a therapist. And that, like, I can ask questions about how how our medication is going and try to help clients, like, understand if there's any symptoms. And they can go back and talk to the med provider about it and really talk to them about, um, you know, if they feel like it's helping. And really, I know a little bit about, you know, SSRIs and how that influences sexual libido, but it's it's minimal. I'm not the med provider, and that's what right. I always tell my clients, right? So I would never tell a med provider what meds to prescribe or how to do yeah. their job. 
and med providers aren't therapists or like psychiatrists where they can do therapy and have that yeah. extra education. Yeah. They need to also stay in their lanes with this. Um, and I think that's a big one that a lot of people don't realize. And another thing with that is they will also a lot of times diagnose people with ADHD or ADD. And here's the thing, y'all. They are not clinically trained in mental health diagnoses. And med providers out there, if any of you are watching this, please, please, please stop diagnosing your clients with that and tell them to get psychological testing because yeah. that is what they need to actually know if they are experiencing those symptoms. And because we've been trained in full diagnosis and if they go through with ADHD testing and that's not it, then you're going to ask, you know, collaborate, consult with that therapist that they're working with and see if there's a differential diagnosis specifically that could have some similar symptoms. Because I hear that so much from family members and friends, like, oh yeah, this person diagnosed me with ADHD. I'm like, well, who? Are you, are you in therapy? Did you do psychological testing? And then your therapist included that? Because that's what I do. I tell all my clients, testing on file, I'm not diagnosing you with this because I cannot ethically and legally do that. And so they're like, no, my PA, my doctor, am I this, am I that? And I'm like, no. And so even that could be a misdiagnosis. Right. So that's not, it's one of the things where PAs also need to stay in their lane with this stuff and just have real conversations of if you need testing for that, you need to get it done. Yep. You need to refer out. Yeah. Any thoughts on that one? You know, I don't know if it's our ethics or training or what, but, you know, we've been trained to really stay in our lanes. And if we don't know, always do fur out and some things are not our specialty and that's fine that's why we refer out and it's so important to refer out to have the correct diagnoses and you know that can help that can help get services if you are you know meet a certain criteria and you've been assessed you can you know get services and resources and to be diagnosed so that misdiagnosed that that could you know you may not get things that you need to really succeed also. So it could do more harm than good. Yeah, it could do more harm than good. And we talk about this. Like yeah. how it could be more harm than good when you think when another professional thinks that they know our job, but they actually cause more harm than good. Mm-hmm. And then people tend to trust the person prescribing medications yeah. rather than the therapist. And the therapist. So we have it backwards so much. Yeah. So it's really about like, think about who you're getting your information exactly. from at the end of the day. So we've talked about like owning our own businesses, what it's like being a solopreneur, what it's like people trying to do our jobs, us having to like stay in our fucking lane. Yeah. (laughs) What would you say? Like, let's, let's shamelessly celebrate. Like, what are some of your proudest moments in really being your own solo business owner? Because that's a fucking accomplishment in itself that a lot of people don't discuss. You know, I think when I got invited to podcast, Mm. when I, um, you know, when I got invited to share my story in in magazines about being an entrepreneur, where I got started, even the things that I get on LinkedIn, the things that I get to write about, honestly, because I'm a solo entrepreneur, I get to have a voice that agency therapists may not get to, where they essentially could get in trouble or terminated for saying things that they want to but they can't with me i'm a solo entrepreneur so the most i can do is probably get canceled or people are, <laughs> are people gonna troll me you know and i expect that people will troll me because when you put your voice out there not everybody's gonna agree with you and that's fine um so i think my proudest moments have been really really just having people hear about my story and my journey and my powerful message of you know forging your own path and owning that path and owning it so and there's still more and we're still babies like two and three years old we are we're toddlers and i think as toddlers we're doing fucking amazing things yeah how many people can say like i'm going to bali for a week to go work on my business yeah not a lot. Not a lot. And you've been quoted in a lot of great press and you've done a lot of great podcasts and there's more to come and 
with what you said about posts, absolutely. Like, it feels like, in a way, you know, therapists, if they are in agency settings, like, their voice gets taken away. Like, their First Amendment gets taken away. They might sign NDAs or yeah. don't talk shit about this company or yeah. whatever. And there are a lot and of them like that. And then yeah. they're Facebook posting anonymously in groups because their employers might be in these groups. And so there's just this scared mentality with things. So yeah. there's a lot of, like... Fear. freedom with it yep. with being able to just say what you fucking want to say it's amazing and i've had therapists reach out to me and back to me thank you for saying this thank you for telling the truth and a lot of them can't because they work for agencies that will you know reprimand them for speaking out the truth so there is a freedom to be in a solo entrepreneur where we get to say whatever it is that we want to say Absolutely. Shout out to all of Paia's, like, folks and people that have inboxed her. Absolutely. That's just supporting her and, like, encourages her. I don't need to speak for you, but I need to, like, be doing that stuff, you know, because sometimes you have to really think about what you're putting out there, of course. And it's also, like, it needs to be said. And I think it's just so important to be able to do that right right we are censored we are we are so very censored we're a field that is very censored we're afraid of backlash and that's why i think a lot of us don't speak out as therapists and so it's up to a solo solo entrepreneur therapist to really use our voice and say things for what they are even though it's hard even though there's a lot of shame and it needs to be said though yeah absolutely a hundred percent it does need to be said and it needs to keep being said yeah it needs to be said yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely when i think about that one i'm like i think the biggest flex for me is honestly never giving up yeah and you said something about like i've had to work on my scarcity like scarcity comes and goes yeah like it is not just i worked on it done no it comes and goes and i think i'm very proud of myself for just being me and not like feeling like i have to dim my light in rooms that like i've never met these fucking people and then i sort out who are my people and who aren't when it comes to supporting me like not only in business but just life as well yeah and some people will surprise you as well like there's some people where you're like i had no idea that this made such an impact on you and then they're like Yes, and they see that, and they're just like, keep going. So I'm grateful for all the people that truly support me deep down, even if they are saying it every so often. Like, I don't need that validation every fucking day or anything. I can do that for myself. (laughs) Like, do my power pose in the mirror, but like, I am a boss ass bitch, bitch. Yeah, you're positive. Yeah, yeah, like, that's my fucking pump up song when it comes to business, but that's a big one but then I think yeah like all the things that business really gives you with opportunities and life yeah. like it's huge and it's tremendous and we wouldn't be able to do some of that stuff mm-hmm. um, like I love that I've gotten free sex toys I love that right. people have asked me to you know try different products I love that like we got sponsored by B like yeah. for our event in September so women yeah. in Minnesota out there September 20th as long as we post this before then <laughs> um, but yeah and I'm, I'm very proud of press and SEO and getting on the first page of fucking Google in Woo! less than six months I worked my butt off for yeah that. I'm proud of myself for also doing like two business work trips this yeah. year out of country with two badass women business owners as well because you don't hear that a lot you don't see that a lot and I know my business is evolving and changing yeah and so I'm very proud of not having to hide that I like doing energy reads I like picking affirmation cards with clients I like being able to record my YouTube channel I like talking about the astrology I like doing birth chart reads I like doing astro sex so I feel like just there's power in that permission of this is you're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want to you are allowed to do whatever you want 
you're allowed to pivot, um, you're allowed to change, yeah. you're allowed to change your mind, you're allowed to do whatever it is that fits best with you, and you don't have to ask anybody else's permission. Not at all. Anything else that you have to add, like just what it's like being a solo entrepreneur? You know, it's hard, and I wouldn't change it for anything. I wouldn't change it for anything. I get to live a life that I want, I love, and it's still ever evolving. And um, yeah, believe in yourself, bet in yourself. Nobody has to believe in you, but you gotta believe in you. That is my final word. You gotta believe in you. Again, you are the shit. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, my mantra when I was stepping 100% into my own, it was, if you don't believe in you, don't expect anyone else to. That's so true. And it sounds like a very negative statement, but that's what lit the fire under my ass to do these things and put myself yeah. out there and go to random ass networking meetings and just put me out there when that can be really difficult sometimes. And when you know that you're gonna get haters, yep, you know and when you know haters. that not everything or everyone is gonna be your cup of tea, and it's kinda like kissing a bunch of frogs <laughs> to find your people that yeah. really are those supporters at the end of the day. So, right, right. This is the shameless truth for today, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Make sure to comment below something supportive, like this video if you are here for it. If there are any other questions that you have for me and Paia or episodes that you want us to be able to do, definitely share that with us, boo. So, own it. Stay shameless.